Hello everybody, I'm Mike from Star Structure Telescopes and I was getting ready to put this one together and thought it'd be a great opportunity to bring everybody along. These videos should be used as your first time assembly guide as we do not send instructions with the telescope. You can use these videos regardless of what size you have. Uh, before we get started assembling it, let's talk about the finish. It is a painted product. There are three materials that get painted, aluminum, wood, and fiberglass reinforced plastic. Uh, the aluminum is prepped and then primed with a self-etching acid primer and then it's finished with a single stage enamel. It has a semi-gloss finish and it's textured. The flat back surfaces are also a, a single stage enamel. They have a flat finish and are smooth. Uh, for cleanup, we recommend using only soft cotton cloths as lint-free as possible, dampened with water only. The glossy surfaces you can use one to wipe with and then a dry one to dry with. The flat black surfaces you want to be very careful so you only want to use a wet cloth on those and then let them air dry. When wiping these surfaces apply as little pressure as possible. Um, for touch up uh, for the uh, glossy areas uh, Rust-Oleum hammered black is a close match and it dries really hard so it's a good product. Um, for the flat black surfaces, you can use Rust-Oleum Professional Flat Black. Never spray this directly on the telescope. Spray some on, a, on something else. Get a touch-up brush, mix it up, thicken it up a little bit, and then brush it into the scratched areas. Uh, in the event that you scratch the scope all the way to bare metal, Rust-Oleum Professional Aluminum Primer can be used. Again, don't spray it directly on the telescope, but spray it on another piece of material. Mix it up and brush it in. Okay, the ground board basically has two main components. It has the drive board for the servo cap, and then it has an aluminum uh, triangular frame. If you do not get the servo cap, then everything's exactly the same, except instead of a round board, you get a triangular one. Okay, so I flipped over the triangular frame. I lined up the drive board to the appropriate holes. It only goes on one way. And now what I'm going to do, I started the screws, there's a bronze bushing that gets pushed into the center. So I'm going to push that in, and then I'm going to install the center bolt, screwing it into the threads until I get to the shoulder of the bolt. I'm going to do this before I tighten any of the screws to make sure that it's aligned to the center properly. Uh, next, I'm going to install my three Teflon pads and that will complete the assembly of the ground board. This particular telescope has the power ground board option so we're going to be installing that as well. Okay with the uh, power ground board receptacle screwed on next I'm going to put the stainless steel rings. These are from Astro Systems. Uh, these go on with four countersunk number four screws and then for the to connect to the receptacle, there's two number four uh, machine screws that go all the way through and come out the other side. This will bring us our inner and outer ring to connect our terminals to. Okay, I've uh, run my wire. I put some zip tie holders down. My zip ties in, nuts and washers on my legs, and tighten them down. Uh, take note of how I run this wire. I put it very close to the foot. So this way it minimizes any chance of the wire getting pinched when you set up the scope. And now we'll flip the ground board over and get the rocker going. Before we put the rocker on the ground board, I want to show you the underneath. Um, you can see the big center bushing. That will be the center bolt to go through the rocker into the ground board. And then the four smaller ones are for the contacts of the power ground board system. Okay, I have my rocker hanging here. I'm getting ready to put it on the ground board, but before I do, I wanted to talk about how we shim uh, between the uh, ground board and the rocker. So here you can see I have a series of two stainless steel shims and a plastic shim. Uh, when we test the telescope, we put it together, uh, kind of guess how much shim we need there, uh, see if we're correct. If not, we take it apart and then we can adjust the thickness of the shim. Purpose of this is, is once the telescope has its full weight or is completely assembled, we need to get a specific amount of load on the Teflon pads so the scope operates smoothly. 
So uh, just remember, if you ever take this thing apart, to take note of what is between the uh, rocker and the ground board. Okay, I got my rocker down on the ground board, and I want to show you from the top. That's the 832 screw coming through. These are nylon bushings, and what the reason we have nylon in there is to isolate any electric from the aluminum structure. Then you can see we have the center bolt. There's a black nylon washer under it. Don't know if you can see that, but it's there. Uh, this bronze bushing goes all the way through to the bottom of the uh, rocker. Okay, so if you take this apart and put it back together, the rule is tighten the bolt till it bottoms. Then with a ratchet and a three-quarter inch socket, uh, give it about a quarter turn. That'll squish everything and seat the bronze bushings properly, and then back it off about an eighth of a turn. Um, that black nylon washer under there should actually be free to spin when it's tight. Okay, I'm getting ready to wire up the top part and um, basically the way it works we have these two bronze pins that will go in here push them down all the way till they hit the rail and then the springs will go on top of those and then this bronze piece will go over the bolt there pushing the springs down making contact with the rails. This one's complete. Then what'll happen is the wire from the power rail will connect to one of those lugs. We'll run the wire nice and clean. And the power rail, which is also from Astro Systems, will connect here, giving you switches for all the components. Uh, as you can see, there's a piece of ABS plastic that's double stick taped to the inside of the rocker. This isolates it from being able to touch any metal, and also this has a double stick tape underneath it, which will um, stop it from being able to touch anywhere here. Okay, so I finished wiring everything in, checked everything with the voltmeter, put my zip tie holders down and zip tied the wire nice and neat so it can't interfere with anything, and that concludes our ground board option. The next step is to install uh, pretty much everything affiliated with the rocker. Um, we're going to start with the servo cat. Uh, the servo cat, for the most part, installs exactly the way the directions come from the manufacturer. Um, the only difference is we manufacture this bracket for the altitude motor to adapt it to our design. Other than that, pretty much everything else is the same. Okay, I finished installing the azimuth and altitude motors. The servo cat box mounts down with a strap to the floor. Um, we make it so it's very accessible from the rear of the telescope. We also have this wiring panel on the back of the scope that brings all the wires from the front to back here. So all your plug-ins off the podium that we'll show later go right here so you don't have to plug anything into the front of the servo cat. I've also put in the azimuth encoder. I'm working on finishing up the wire, but before I do, I wanted to talk to you about some of the uh, power source options. First thing is, if you do not receive the power ground board option, what you'll get is you'll get everything wired to male cigarette lighter ends. There'll be anywhere from two to three of these, depending on what options you received. You'll also get an equal number of female ends to go on to your 12 volt batteries. These ends, in some way or another, will indicate which side is positive, and remember, everything on the telescope is wired positive tip. Now, if you do get the power ground board, included in that option is everything we've shown so far up to the power rail. We do not bring the components to the rail. Instead, we have a second option, which wires all of the components to the rail. All right, I got all the wiring finished up. To begin with, you can see here that we have the power rail. I have three plugs into it. You still have three more that are on the switches. These six are your outputs. The other two are 12 volt input. So if you would like to use internal batteries, you still have the option to do that. Okay, these wires are tucked in, zip tied to the scope so everything's tight so nothing can interfere with the movement of the mirror box. The wires come down, they plug into our electrical panel and the back of the servo cap box to complete the connections. Uh, here you can see the azimuth encoder wired in and then over here 
the altitude and azimuth motors are wired in nicely. Uh, showing you the front of the servo cap box, you can see these two wires that are plugged in. Those run back and go into our uh, panel. All right. Uh, what we have here is we have a RJ11, a RJ45, and a RJH. The RJH is the hand pad for the servo cat. The RJ45 is for the encoders. And the RJ11 is for your DSC from the Argo Navis. These will come from the podium and we'll show them later. Also, you'll have either one or two 12 volt input supplies on this panel. Um, also included, if you get the integrated wiring option that brings the components to the power rail, you still get one cigarette lighter plug, female, and one cigarette lighter plug, male, to go to a battery. This you can plug into the power rail here and then connect this to your battery in the event you don't have an external source or whatever the case may be. So this way you can still use internal batteries with the power rail. So that pretty much completes the wiring inside the rocker. And now we're going to move on to the podium. The uh, power ground board option also comes with this 25 foot 16 gauge uh, extension. This would be the end that would go on to plug in to the receptacle on the ground board and then it finishes up with a male cigarette lighter end that'll go to whatever you uh, wanted to. Again, everything is positive tip.